like 10, said she only bought 10 She know I'm a rock star, I'm not in a rock band Everything I touch is gold like I got a high end Too far. Kept it real with the God, I got bands, I got bands. Finna buy moms a house on the sand Real Where's niggas that? do real things, but don't you understand It ain't hard to be a hundred, little nigga, you a hand But it'll all come back in the end The God always watching, you can't lie and can't pretend lie and OG late on rent, you just spend it on some rims Mom struggling, you dropped on some Kim You ain't him, boy, you Jimmy, you gon' answer for your sins Gave my mama 10k for I iced out my limbs Got it out the jungle with my apes, you a chimp, you a chump Nigga, you ain't pimp, you a punk, what the fuck? Convince me that you solid, good luck Alright, what's up everybody? This is A Million One Questions with your host being myself And I'm here with a very talented painter, creator And just really cool person uh, They go by Play With Paint uh, My name is Brianna J, I'm a creator from San Jose, California Yep. Uh, so the first question I usually like to ask everybody is, you know, who, I like who are they, but like who is Play With Paint, pretty much? Play With Paint, um, that's more of like my brand in the community. I want to start building and creating. I want it to be, eventually create, go into like a nonprofit type thing and like have a space for kids or adults, whatever the age, just to come and create and just, just play and like not get into not get too deep with like life and like life stress to just be like a relaxful mm -hmm. place to come environment to come create and do like some dope shit or whatever you want to do but play with paint right now is just it's just me and i'm creative i do a lot of different outlets but right now painting is my main one and that's just how i relax just come home after mm -hmm. work and play with paint see what i can come up with that's cool um so like with the non well what you wanted to be a nonprofit would you want like a creative building or like an yeah that would that would be a dope like final goal like yeah okay. the space and the uh, when did you start painting? Um, I started I've been creative since I was little just the schools I've been through were very hands on um, but I think I really didn't start I didn't do like my first canvas until like junior high mm -hmm. in, like eighth grade mm -hmm. as a landscape. I'll see if I can get you a picture of it. It's actually pretty. It's cool. Okay. But it's a little landscape. Um, that was like junior high, and then I stopped. And then about six years ago, I had some canvas at home from my little brother's school, and um, I just started doing that. I think my first piece was like Chance the Rapper, maybe. Oh shoot. But um, yeah, I just started with that, and then just six years, it just stuck with it. I liked it as an outlet and just something I enjoyed doing it, and mm. stuck with it. Yeah, also, I noticed he said, like, it might have been Chance, but I noticed, like, a lot of your early work was a lot of music, musicians, artists, um, uh, why, like, why, was that, was that pretty much how you started, just doing, doing music? Doing music, yeah, music I pieces? think, um, if I didn't have art, music is, what, definitely, like, my second outlet for mm -hmm. that, and, yeah, I'm, I'm very big into music, I've always, I come from a music family as well, um, my great grandpa was like a radio host, one of the first Mexican American radio hosts out here in San Jose. My dad yeah. DJs, so like I come from a musical family background and very creative family background as well. So I think it's just kind of in my blood to yeah, to keep it going to and incorporate it somewhere. Just, yeah, it's just a part of who I am. How'd you get so good at faces? Because I think the ones <laughs> I remember, I think I'm pretty sure I might have seen your Chance one, but I mean just right there, your Tupac one, or like your other like other ones yeah, I've seen. Just how'd you um, get so so um, early on? Just, Art school in junior high and high school. It's very basic. Um, if you're if people draw and like are, are an artist, they know this form. It's like you draw a square, you put a line through the middle, mm -hmm. and you just kind of make a grid and you start putting in the eyes and the and that's just that process is what mm -hmm. I use for all my faces and mm -hmm. it's just it's just a basic technique I learned in junior high and then I just kept practicing and got better. that one. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and you, did you study out here in the Bay Area or San Jose? Or? Uh, for school? Uh, you like said you started art. in junior high, so. Oh, that... um, yeah, for, for art, it's just, I've always been creative, like I said, from, from a kid. So I've always done, like, electives, art classes and things like that. Mm. And yeah, I started in junior high, high school. I went to high school, junior high out here in San Jose. Uh, how'd you, uh, or what do you like about the San Jose? Like, how's community out here and just even arti the, art the artistic community and just we people out here? We have a very here. big... I think San Jose is one of the most creative cities in the Bay, even though that debate is out there. <laughs> San Jose is a part of the Bay, I'm going to say that. Um, we got you tracks a million. It's <laughs> like the whole the whole hyping movement. We won't get into that, but uh, not. Um, it, it's just very diverse, and we have so much culture here and so much artists i know like i've met so many different artists along this journey and it's just it's just deep we're deep rooted 
And I think if we come together and when we support each other, we're very strong and like mm -hmm. we we have a lot. We contribute a lot to the Bay. I think we don't get enough credit for it, but I feel that I've heard we that, do that a lot as well. I've like I try to give San Jose as much credit as you know, <laughs> but I think they deserve. You know what I mean? Uh, I do want to go back to you saying like you have a lot of music background within your family and stuff like that. Um, and I noticed you also been practicing DJing or you do DJ. I'm not sure. Yeah, um, I just started practicing. Did you get that from your family or what inspired, yeah, so really inspired my, you to go do that? Yeah, my um, dad is actually a DJ and that's, I, I grew up around music and like freestyle music is what he used to DJ. So he used to have that playing in the house or like my grandpa playing oldies mm -hmm. and it's just, I, it's just been a part of my life since I was born. It's mm -hmm. just always playing in the house, it's always around, and it's always good music. And then with my dad being DJ, it's just it's just fun to watch and do. And I've been been wanting to dive into it for a while now. And then just this year, I decided to go and like pick up some um, turntable decks and just download Serato and mm -hmm. just kind of play with it. And it's just a different outlet for me when I get tired of painting sometimes mm -hmm. and just go jump into music and. Yeah. have a different routine for that yeah, it's always fun i myself also want to like learn how to do all that yeah. so it's fun like watching you do your own like mashups or mixes yeah yeah you know, that's my favorite the mashups mm -hmm. and mixes uh what's in like your music rotation right now Ooh, um big on drake that's probably like my top <laughs> artist number one artist right there um drake i like snow allegra brent fires sonder um amy winehouse erica badu i listen to a lot of r&b like mm -hmm. it's that's the tone I set whenever I'm in a creative vibe. Mm -hmm. um, who else? I don't know. I think those are my top ones. That's, For that's sure. I keep on the daily. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any, um, what music artists do you want to like paint or do, yeah, just paint uh, that you haven't done yet? Uh, definitely Drake. I mm -hmm. haven't. I think it's, I don't know, kind of cliche maybe, but I want to see like his, what his next album cover mm -hmm. is going to be and then hopefully do something like off that but Drake would be good I want to do a Mac J piece another one um, who else Snow Allegra would be dope and Amy Winehouse tribute would be cool mm -hmm. I think probably them and yeah, I've noticed you're really good at doing your tributes like I think the first tribute I saw was your Tupac one yeah so how did that like how did the idea for that one come about um, it started with the so the on my Tupac piece um, his face is actually a screen print, so mm -hmm. it's a t-shirt. And I want to get into more of that too, like more collages on canvas. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, his face is just, is a screen print. I cut it out, paste it on the canvas. And around that time I was living in the city and I just happened to be, I think the Biggie and Tupac documentary is like mm -hmm. on Netflix or something like that. And I was just watching it. So I was just like around like his energy a lot during mm -hmm. that time period and I wanted to create that. And the Bay Bridge, he was from Oakland, or not from Oakland, but Grew up there. Like, I mean, that quote that. right there, when I came to Oakland, that's where I learned the game, like, yeah, exactly. like that's what he says. So. That, that was literally, like, my favorite part, and the first thing I noticed when yeah. I saw it, I was like, oh, that quote she, I was like, very, she knows. Like, capturing, like, yeah. and, like, it represents the Bay as well, and so for, for him to say that, and being the artist that he is, and what he's done to the music game is, like, dope, like, mm -hmm. you know, give, give your flowers to what helps you. Exactly. Uh, I think other tribute pieces I've been seeing is a lot of Kobe lately. Yeah, yeah. Lately, like you, you've you done it for a while. Um, when uh, when did you make your the, your first uh, tribute piece to him? Um, so I think that one right there, we could probably do like a shot of it. But yeah, um, that was my first piece. That's also a screen printed piece too. And it's not even done yet. Oh, what? I didn't even know that. But, um, yeah, a lot of people ask about it. And I was just like, I'm not even finished with it yet. So that's the first one. It's not even done yet, though. But that's probably my favorite. So I've been hanging on to that one. Mm -hmm. And then this is my latest one back here. Um, uh, yeah, I just, I'm not really big on, like, I don't like when a lot of artists paint, like, when, ce when a celebrity dies or a public figure dies and they're quick to, like, start painting. Like, I don't like doing that. So I was very hesitant and it took me a while to even do, like, the Kobe ones because I didn't mm -hmm. want it to come off, like, oh, she's just yeah. doing it because, like, it's hype right now. Yeah, like, trying to make when Nipsey died, right? like, everyone was coming out with shit and mm -hmm. it's cool. You can donate it and, like, do it for the right cause, but I just don't like that mm -hmm. hype. So I'm kind of hesitant when painting, like, painting people, like, once they pass away. So, mm -hmm. but, you get the um and well i know you're you're a long time laker fan yeah. when did you uh when was the first time like you watched the uh, either a laker game or even kobe play uh, the laker game my first laker game was actually a warriors home game and they were playing i was with my cousin right here actually um, um 
that was our first game. We went there playing the Lakers. It was Kobe was there. That was my first time seeing Kobe as well. And um, I believe it ended up winning. I think it was like a Christmas Eve game too, like around the holidays. So it was just pretty dope. It was that was like my first. Just seeing him like play live, like mm. that's like one, was one of my like bucket lists. And yeah. It was just cool, surreal moment just to be there watching him mm -hmm. do his thing. I remember when he when he you know when he was playing like they they would always have like Christmas game or they would always have like a certain yeah. special date and I would go to the same ones. Yeah, uh, so they're fun. It's cool, something different for the holidays. Mm -hmm. um, so we're talking about like your chibi pieces, your Tupac one, your Kobe ones. Um, is your process of making those or even any piece uh, the same? Um, no, I think every piece I do is I approach it like differently, depending on what it, what it is. There's like a different routine for it. For the most part, like my music, pour up a little bit sometimes, get drink a little bit, get the creative juices flowing as I like to call it, and um, just go about it like that. Just kind of whatever vibe it feels, I just have to fill it out and see like. See what see how what comes to me. I kind of let it. I don't like to force things. Like when mm -hmm. people sometimes people rush artists and things like that, and it's just like you really just gotta let it flow. And like when you when you're in that groove, like it's gonna show on the canvas. And it's gonna show in your work, and you just gotta let it come to you when you're ready. Yeah, I feel that. Uh, when you notice yourself, or when you uh, get into a painter's block, what are some things that you have tried to do or you do to you know get back into it? My thing I just realized is uh, my routine. I have, or me specifically, I have a very routine with like schedule. I work where I live. I talked about this before too, and like I can get very like fixated on a piece because I'm looking at it all the time, or I'm on this house and like I'm at the, like I need to finish that. Or I need to finish that. So when that like painter block comes around, I try to get out the house, do something different, something new, even if it's like small, like going to a different park or like trying a different food. I'm learning that you have to like expand your life experiences to get different creative ideas brought into you and like that energy and it'll come out in your ideas. So I just like to take a step, take a step back and just like go to the music, go on the turntables and just play around with some things and just kind of get a, another creative outlet coming to me mm -hmm. away from the painting. For sure. So do you like try to just like do you put the painting away or you're like just so you oh, don't I'll, see it all the time? No, or? I'll leave it out. I think it's a reminder too, like, you, you gotta finish, you gotta finish this, like, shit. get on your shit, like, like that. Like, it's, it's the hustle to it too, but yeah, mm -hmm. I like to leave it out and just know, but... And then, because sometimes too, it's like, if I'm DJing, I'll have an idea and, like, I can turn and look at a painting, like, oh, that would look cool. Or, like, maybe this color has a background, mm -hmm. like, like, different and, like, kind of envision it, like, that way. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I definitely leave them up as a reminder to get your shit done. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> Uh, have you found like your niche, your niche, and um, what you like to paint, what you prefer to paint, or do you just try to like do it all? Um, no, I definitely haven't found like I don't think like what I like to use a lot of color, but like I don't know what my niche is yet. So that's why I do kind of paint. I think my paintings right now are kind of random, like anime to some abstract things, or I do like the faces or celebrities and mm -hmm. like things like that. I don't think I've found like exactly what I what I want to do. Creatively, mm -hmm. and you're still, mentally. and are you still like learning like other ways to paint? In a way? Yeah, I um, yeah, I think I'm always learning like new techniques and different like the last the first Kobe tribute piece I did. Um, that was my first time really doing like spray paint on the canvas. Like I've done it before a little bit here and there, but the whole background was different. So that was kind of like a scary approach, just because mm -hmm. you don't want to fuck it up. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, it was it was cool. Now I use it a lot more, and it's just like taking that initial step, just mm -hmm. doing it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Um, so kind of when you kind of you said like you like to get creative in other ways when you have painters blog, and I noticed uh, you also design jewelry, or you designed some jewelry. Yeah, yeah. your ring, yeah, uh, for example. Ring. How'd you uh, get into that, and what um, you know? I think it started off with just gold. I'm a very like gold fan, and like. 22 karat to be exact, but like, I just like that shine. I just, I like it. I think it's clean. Like diamonds are cool too. And if it, it could be a little extra flashy and I'm like, I'm not that way, but I like, I like the gold and like, I just wanted to make my own ring, my own, not someone else's creations. Like yeah. I'm a creative, like I said, so I just wanted to try it. So um, I have a jeweler, his name is Paul, shout out Paul. <laughs> um, he's in Sunnyvale and he gets, it's a family owned jewelry and he gets all his gold from Dubai and he can, I just sent him to design and 
what I wanted and he did like amazing with it. It came out like better. Like mm -hmm. I was for real, like kind of shaking when I got the box. Like, <laughs> it went from like Dubai to New York and then it came out here to the Bay and that's when I got it. So it's cool. Right? It was cool. Yeah. It's just that that whole process was just very dope to be a part of and like, just to see your work come to life again. Totally. And that's a B. Yeah, a it's video. a B. Do you have an idea for what you would want your next piece to be, um, or next? You know, yeah, the next to be? piece I want to I want to design a grill. I kind of have it like designed up, but I, yeah, I definitely want to grow. It's like big culture, just that everyone mm -hmm. gotta have one, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think that's gonna be the next one. I have a little idea, but I'm not gonna share it yet. Mm. All right. Um, Hopefully this year I'll I'll have it done. Can't wait to see. Um, I saw you mentioned a while back that your Inky series is like your most expensive collection or just your you know your most prized collection yeah. why is that uh, that series is, is very like personal it's very um deep rooted for like what i've my past and like what i've been through and i think it's my most valuable one on a sentimental thing and i think that's why i would put that price tag on it if i were to ever sell it because mm -hmm. it's like who i am um I don't know if I'll go with that. That'll be like interview part two. <laughs> but yeah, like that that's a deep series. And basically what that series is, um, is like my demons from my past. And that's like the faces and like, it's completely different to black and white. Everything I do is it's very kind of bright and colorful. Oh, okay. So yeah. That is true. We'll, we'll I actually just noticed that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's very dark. It's a little yeah. different than what I usually do when that's like representation of my past. But like what made me, you know, we all have mm -hmm. our own demons and those were mine. Yeah, exactly. Um, were you inspired by any artists for that series or just any of your paint, any of your art? For that particular series, no. I think it was like my own inspiration because it was my own story and my own struggle. But um, Kanye West, The Devil in the New Dress, I think that's the mm, song. Like that's, yeah. the, that's the song I was playing in like video when I finished it, like video, those, the video I made to show it out. But yeah, definitely Kanye. Kanye's a big my top artists too, I forget that one. <laughs> okay. uh, what about like painters? I know I see, uh, I forgot what the dog one is. I forgot his name. Um, but I've seen his paint, cause uh, he, he went on tour, or he didn't Jeff, go on tour, but. Uh, I forget oh, his Jeff, name too, uh, uh, I think it's K, it's like. Yeah, yeah, I'm Kuz, having a. Kuz, I think, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Damn, I forgot about him too, I forgot that. <laughs> <laughs> Are there like painters you, you, that inspired you throughout your life? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really, I honestly don't really, like, look to a specific painter. Like, obviously, like, the great ones, probably, you know, Picasso, Frida, Jeff Coos, um Basquiat. Yeah, Basquiat. Yeah. All, like, all of them are def definitely, like, inspirations and in just seeing what they created. But, like, I don't really look to them. I don't, I think for me, like, if I look or, like, trying to start studying someone else, I'll start to pull from them. But, like, mm. too much of their stuff, yeah. you know, like. And that's not me, like, I'm just thinking, like, oh, that sells, you know, if that mm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, I definitely look for them for inspiration and, like, what they've done and, like, what, where it has taken them in that way. But, like, artistically, no, I like to do, like, my own thing. And, yeah. And that seems to be better, just yeah. overall, just, just so like, no one can ever say. Mean, like, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, alongside, like, music and, you know, the Lakers and just sports, you also paint a lot, of, or I've noticed you paint a lot of anime as well. Uh, what do you enjoy about doing those those kind of pieces? So honestly, I was never into anime before until um, people. I got my first anime piece, commission piece, um, requested. But um, yeah, I never, never was into it. I didn't just didn't see the hype around it. Mm -hmm. So I forget the first one I did was maybe Hunter and Hunter. Oh yeah, that's the one. I think I saw I think, that one also. Yeah, that, that was the first was one. So I didn't know anything about it, so I started looking up the shows and watching mm -hmm. it just to see like what the characters about, like what they're what they have, like their powers and shit mm -hmm. like that, whatever you call it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Do you watch anime? <laughs> uh, keep up with. I tried it. I watched like yeah. the mainstream ones. It's pretty I cool. I, I like it. I like it. It's pretty dope. But like, yeah, that's so. That's it was cool that painting brought me into like that that different anime art world. And it's very dope. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's how I got into that one. But they're fun to do. I actually really enjoy doing them and like watching the shows. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And those were, uh, what are they called when someone asks for those to be made? Uh, commission pieces. Oh, so those three anime ones are mostly commissioned? Mo yeah, mostly commissioned. Someone, which means like someone hits me up like, hey, can you send me or can you do this picture or this scene or I like mm -hmm. this anime? And they pay you for that. 
And then is it like free? Like they just give you the idea and then you and then they're just like you yeah. Sometimes there's like a picture they want me to follow and like like the outline of it, and then they'll give me freedom for like the colors or the background. And then sometimes they just tell me like any hunter and hunter or any like my hero academy whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Uh, like what are some like difficulties as an artist uh, have you like uh, gone through and just like been through? Difficulties other than like, because I always hear like just artists kind of struggle, especially nowadays, because a lot of people don't value art as much as they used to. Yeah. So what is what are what are some of your struggles that you've gone? Um, I think just putting yourself out there and kind of getting seen and like pricing for artwork. That's probably like the hardest word. To, I think pricing with artwork varies. Like even like on a big scale, like sometimes they'll just be like a black line on a canvas, mm -hmm. and it's like hundred thousand dollars. Exactly. Like I think it just might be like the hype around their name, or maybe they have like a good person representing them. I don't know. Like I haven't dove that deep into like the art business like that, but yeah, um, I think pricing it wise, and like sometimes it makes it feel like you put your price work at some you know, at a certain price and like people don't buy it or like they'll ask you for it and they're like, oh, I'll pay hundred bucks for this. And I was like, no, like that's mm -hmm. how much my supplies cost. If yeah. that, like, they don't, I don't think people see um, the real, like what it really takes going into the artist supplies, packaging, you're, like it's usually a one man show, like mm -hmm. you're by yourself paintings, very solitude. But I don't think people see it. So I think the struggle would be like, having people understand like what really goes into a piece because they just see the final product like yeah. the hours time materials mm. ideas the struggle the frustration from painters block and things like that mm. so what do you consider when it comes to pricing your art um i think the most significant thing for me would be um the process my whole process like no each process is different for each painting even if it's like a duplicate like these are kind of like the same but like each one is different mm -hmm. and I think that process is the most valuable for me because it's my time my energy and whatever personal thing like my feelings I'm putting into it some days like some pieces I get frustrated with and I'll get so turned off by the piece because I'm just not into it mm -hmm. so like I think maybe I would value that a little bit higher than a piece that just came naturally or I don't know it just kind of depends on each piece I think I would put it that way like yeah. each piece is different and it brings a different emotion and it's a different connection or story depending on what the piece is and whoever my client is like things yeah, like that totally um i mean we're, we're sitting right in front of these pieces uh can you say a little bit about about them um so these three right here are a mini series of um, my other piece over there and it's just a buildup of paint so the original one was a buildup of two years just left over paint from like pieces i would do and just kind of slap it on the canvas like that. Mm -hmm. So I try to do that with this, but I've had these for like a year. I try to get these done in like six months, but like it wasn't looking right. And like mm -hmm. I realized it was a learning process too. I realized that it, um, it takes time and like it's, it's starting to come a lot better. And then uh, this one is Kobe. This is gonna be my third um, tribute piece to him. Um, this is like from one of his photo shoots from early on. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, I'm trying to have all, of, or this one done at least by the end of the month. Okay, and this is, was this just one you're doing as like a tribute or? Yeah, this one that I'm doing as a tribute just to, for the one year anniversary mm -hmm. coming up. Or it just passed, yeah, it just but passed. Kobe Bryant Day 224 mm -hmm. this month, yeah. Is there anything else like you're working on as of right now? Um, right now, not really. I think I'm just finishing these, but I wanted to do. Um, I want to go back into the collages, like more collage pieces, I think is my next thing I'm going to be doing, mm -hmm. like with old vintage t-shirts and like putting them on a canvas as long as painting and like spray paint and kind of make like a collage canvas piece of art that's a little bit more like textured and like just tangible and more like sentimental with like old clothing or like blank, you know, like different whatever I mm -hmm. find or like. I want to make like collages on canvas size. I think that's what my next thing I'm gonna do. Oh yeah, totally. I mean, I, I've always, I've been a big fan as of recently actually of like the collages, like the, it's a collage and it's also paint. Yeah, like, it yeah. just looks really. It's cool. just different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's something more to look at. Um, I do want to go back to you know the struggles that, or even not even just painters or artists today, but also just creatives, especially on like Instagram. Like you, I've seen you voice your uh, frustration with like the algorithms of Instagram. Um, 
Well, you know, well, what do you think needs to like change to actually help not just celebrities and influencers on Instagram for like these other like businesses, artists and stuff like that? I think um, the accessibility, I think Instagram is limited. Like I think for every hundred followers, like 10 of them are like, it was a small amount, like mm -hmm. for every thousand, only like 50 people. Or they only show you your top 50 on your feed. Like mm -hmm. it's very limiting now. And I think the best thing is just to engage. Like as artists and as creative, I think we all just want our work to be seen mm -hmm. and like seen by as many eyes as possible. Mm -hmm. So like, I think the support goes a long way. A share, a like, a save, like all those things add up mm -hmm. and it's a good way. And when you start building up those things on each post, especially with Instagram, then it starts broadening your audience and it starts expanding who actually sees your work and it goes outside that, those 50 top people on your feed. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, are there other ways, other outlets you've gone to to try to get your, like you said, get your paintings and get your art seen? Yeah, um, definitely social media on all social medias, Twitter, Facebook. Um, I just recently got on TikTok and I realized that like I've reached, I can reach so much more people oh, really? on there okay. with like no fault. Like I only, I just started like maybe like last week, I only have like 14 followers mm -hmm. following like 17 people and it's just like, but my videos are like almost 600 views. It's not a lot, okay. but like, but just like you can, if I really would like to create content, like you can get seen so much faster there. And it's not about the following. It's about like your content the and, the, and it will, it, the audience there is just more supportive. I feel like they're always sharing and like commenting or mm -hmm. liking your posts. And it's just, you just need like one solid video mm -hmm. to go viral on there and you're good. You set. <laughs> I've seen a bunch of like, especially paint. I think the first time I saw TikToks was like just people painting like a wall. Yeah, <laughs> I was never. I, I thought it was just like a dancing app. Like I never really mm -hmm. like got on it. Yeah, totally. I was, I was late to the game, but yeah, it's been pretty cool. Uh, have you been a part of any art shows? Uh, yeah, I have. The uh, actually, it's a cool story. The very um, first art show I did was a Mac J art show. Oh shit! And it was the uh, very first Mac J art show. I think um, Street Bleach did it he does by like hyphy memes now mm -hmm. on instagram he's the one who put that all together so that was like the first one there um out in oakland you can youtube it is it was pretty lit it's dope and like mac wanda came out like all oh, kinds sure. of like bay people were out there but yeah that was my first one i did um and then when i was living in the city i think that's probably when i did most like the most art shows i've ever done was out there Okay. It was cool, but like now that COVID has came, I haven't done any. But I definitely like post COVID, I definitely want to start putting mm -hmm. myself out there more and just it's just it's just fun like space and environment to be around. You mm -hmm. get to link with different artists from out of the city or sometimes just local ones and just yeah. network that way. Um, when you live in the city, um, what's the difference from like the art community in SF and art community out here that um, you noticed? I. I, I think they're kind of similar, but I think the city, for being how like compact it is, there's always something going on. Mm -hmm. Like they have tons of events in the city. Like you can find an art show today, and like if even if you're just looking at it and go show your work. Like, mm -hmm. um, but I think like the vibe is is this, is kind of the same for me. But I haven't really done any art shows out here either. So mm -hmm. I, I was I was born and raised here. But when I started doing out art, I was out in the city for four years. So I just moved back to San Jose about two years ago. So that first year I did um, small little pop-ups mm -hmm. like that, but I haven't done an art show. So I can't really speak on that yet, actually. And so, so but yeah, I definitely want to do some in my hometown. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'll stay, up, I'll stay up to the on that. Yeah. Um, would you also like to plan some one of your own, like one of your own art shows? Or? Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know. I've I've had a, a few different ideas for like a show, solo art show, but none that I'm fully excited about yet. But mm -hmm. hopefully soon, yeah. Yeah, soon to come. Get the first one going. Um, how have you been keeping yourself busy during like COVID? Not even just like painting, just you know overall. Um, well, thankfully I've still got my job. Mm -hmm. That's good. <laughs> so it hasn't changed too much, except for like going out and like you know leaving the house, but. Um, job keeps me busy just being here my family um painting just doing the dj things going out a little bit like to the beach or a park just 
trying to keep busy in that so ways. I think it's been a big thing. I just um, I got into like going outside more since you're always cooped in and stuff. So that's been kind of cool. Just different routines. Mm -hmm. If any, if, if you know, Kobe, if everything does start opening up, do you have any like big plans um, for the rest of this year? Big plans. I want to do back to art shows. I like to get more in, into shows and like creating things like that. Um, I want to start making like bigger pieces and more like creating things outdoors. Like mm -hmm. while I paint, I want to do like a film series going. I would say. Go to, like different um, locate. I don't want to put the yeah, idea out there. Up there yeah. uh, I don't know, people will be snatching shit, but like, um, yeah, I definitely have a, a video yeah, like series I want to start doing as as I paint in like mm -hmm. okay. different spots. That'd be yeah. fun, it's like just incorporating, you know, your painting into yeah. all these other ideas that you may have. Alright, so, your Instagram followers, they ask, what type of supplies do you like to work with? Medium of choice. Um, my medium choice would be acrylic painting, of course, especially Liquitex. Give me a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> um, Liquitex acrylics, I think, were my favorite. I use um, molding paste a lot too, just to build up texture, especially like in these like abstract paintings. Are my favorite. I started working with like spray paint more, um, paint pens, but the main one would be acrylics. So that's about all the questions I have. Um, is there anything you would want to talk about or just share? The floor is yours. Um, no, thank you for the interview. Appreciate you coming out and taking an interest in interviewing me. That's very big. As any creatives that you've worked with, it's very appreciative. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm open for commission pieces. You can find me at Play W Paint, Play with Paint. And uh, and I and I just want to say thank you for inviting me over to uh, to accepting this interview. Uh, big fan of your work. Hoping to buy one soon, sooner or later. Um, and I'm looking forward to see you progress in your art and just, you know, see you do more things, especially the ideas you shared, even the nonprofit you shared in the very beginning. Like, you know, I'm going to keep up. Yeah, yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming. See you all. Please.